GM is facing a huge EV crisis. Mary Barra just shut down EV production and abandoned most of her electric plans for good. GM's decision to suddenly ditch EVs is sending shockwaves through the industry. The reason? Shockingly, nobody is buying them. Nearly 92,000 EVs are piling up at dealer lots with no customers to buy them. The situation is so bad that GM is even selling EVs at massive losses. CEO Mary Barra just went against EVs and announced that GM will now cut EV production and focus on what the common man loves, affordable combustion engine cars. Why did Mary Barra suddenly shut down EV production? Are they giving up on electric cars completely? And why is Ford also shutting down EV production? Come with me as I uncover the story of what could possibly be the biggest disaster in the car industry to date. In a striking revelation, General Motors announced a delay in their production of all electric Silverado trucks at the Orion assembly plant in Michigan, moving it from its original date to 2025. This shocking shift comes amid a significant slowdown in US EV sales, raising concerns about the EV boom. EVs aren't selling as everyone expected, and these overpriced vehicles are definitely not the answer to the needs of middle-class consumers. Despite favorable government incentives to promote electric vehicles, US EV sales growth rate took a downturn, declining by over 20% in just the first half of this year. Dealerships, once witnessing electric cars flying off the shelves, are now filled with stockpiles of unsold inventory. As per Cox Automotive, over 92,000 EVs are currently standing, a staggering 342% jump from last year, when the figure stood at a mere 21,000. In an official statement, GM explained, General Motors today confirmed its decision to retime the conversion of its Orion assembly plant to EV truck production to late 2025. This is to better manage capital investment while synchronizing with the evolving EV demand. This waning EV demand and the pursuit of profitability isn't unique to GM. Other auto behemoths, including Ford and Tesla, are recalibrating their EV strategies to maximize revenue. Tesla, for instance, has slashed prices on several models by thousands, responding to apprehensions over dampening consumer expenditure. Ford, not to be left behind, also initiated price cuts, grappling with a projected loss of $4.5 billion on its EVs for the year. To break it down, Ford loses a whopping $32,000 on every EV sold, with their Ford Model E division already in the red by about $1.8 billion as of July. Wait till I tell you about the $103 million fine that GM had to pay due to making vehicles with faulty quality issues. Jim Farley, Ford CEO, opined, the price consumers are willing to pay has decreased. Echoing a similar sentiment, John Lawler, Ford's motor CFO, remarked, the curve isn't growing as anticipated. The shift to EVs is in progress, but it might be a slower journey than expected. Over the summer, the average selling price for a new EV plummeted by nearly 20% year over year, with purchase incentives surging to almost $4,000. The leadership, spearheaded by CEO Mary Barra, seems to be navigating through a tough time. At the heart of this fiasco lies Barra's seemingly myopic vision for Chevrolet. Her relentless focus on overpriced EVs appears to be less of an evolution and more of a personal gain agenda. While she earned over millions in salary, GM has refused to even pay fair wages to their workers, let alone price their cars right. Things took a grim turn with the allegations of GM peddling faulty trucks and SUVs. This isn't some minor oversight or forgivable blunder. GM was also slapped with a staggering $103 million in fines owing to the deteriorating quality. For 2023, their losses are now cascading around the $1 billion mark. GM was among the first few legacy car makers to transition into EVs. GM also announced recently that it will no longer chase the previously stated goal of producing 400,000 EVs from 2022 through mid-2024. This surprising revelation came just months after GM CEO Mary Barra had strongly reaffirmed the target in July. However, the persistent United Auto Worker strikes played a major role in this decision, having already drained the automaker of a staggering $800 million, with the strike costing the company an additional $200 million per week. GM's projections had to change. GM's altered trajectory does not signify a total abandonment of its electric vision. CFO Paul Jacobson stressed that the company remains focused on reaching the production of 1 million EVs by the end of 2025. In Barra's Q3 letter to shareholders, she articulated the company's strategy. We are moderating the acceleration of EV production in North America to protect our pricing, adjust to slower near-term growth in demand, and implement engineering efficiency and other improvements to make our vehicles less expensive to produce and more profitable.
The challenges just aren't limited to GM's strategy adjustments. Several eagerly awaited EV models, including the Chevy Equinox EV, Chevy Silverado EV RST, and GMC Sierra EV, will face delays, albeit for just a few months, according to Barra. Furthermore, to optimize its financial footing, GM chose to redesign and relaunch the Chevy Bolt EV with more cost-effective lithium-ion batteries. This strategic shift means scrapping an ambitious $5 billion spending plan for several new entry-level EVs. GM's Q3 financial results also revealed a concerning 7.3% decline in third quarter net income, dropping to $3.1 billion. Adjusted earnings saw a decline of 17%, leading to $3.6 billion, which includes the detrimental effects of the strikes that began in mid-September. Production losses in Q4 amounted to a significant $600 million, as per Jacobson. Another piece of the puzzle is GM's recent struggles with the production of its Silverado EVs. From its Detroit facility, also dubbed Factory Zero, GM managed to deliver only 18 Silverado EVs in Q3. This was contrary to plans to escalate production by 2024 at Orion Assembly, where the Bolt EV was produced. Interestingly, this pushback to late 2025 was not due to supply shortages or even the UAW strike. Instead, GM cited evolving EV demands and imperative engineering improvements as primary reasons. Despite the worldwide shift towards EVs, GM recently announced a significant investment in its ICE vehicles, especially in its heavy-duty pickups. This decision offers a comprehensive look into GM's multifaceted strategy that seems to cater to current demands, fund its EV transition, and appease its workforce. Here's exactly what they are doing. GM plans to invest over $1 billion in upgrading two factories in Flint, Michigan, for the manufacturing of new heavy-duty ICE pickup trucks. The substantial expenditure is expected to fortify GM's leading position in the full-size truck business. Even though GM committed to an all-electric fleet by 2035, the company acknowledges the profitability of its ICE vehicles. The heavy-duty pickups saw a sales increase of 38% in 2022, with nearly 288,000 units sold. The revenue from these ICE vehicles will fund GM's conversion to EVs. Analysts and suppliers predict that GM could continue its production of its most profitable combustion trucks and SUVs for another 10 to 12 years. This extended timeline could bring in tens of billions in additional profit, which would bolster the company's resources for its planned complete shift to EVs by 2035. The profitability of GM's ICE vehicles can't be understated. Benchmark auto analyst Michael Ward revealed that last year, GM's average earnings before interest and taxes on its trucks and SUVs was $10,678 per vehicle. By these estimates, GM could earn up to $7.5 billion annually in pre-tax profit on its full-size combustion trucks and SUVs. Notably, the Arlington plant producing GM's full-size combustion SUVs is touted as the most profitable auto plant in the world. GM CFO Paul Jacobson highlighted the company's approach, mentioning that while they are strategically transitioning to EVs, they are also leveraging their prominent ICE portfolio. The profitability of vehicles like Chevy Silverado and Cadillac Escalade are unmatched by the company's new EVs, at least for now. The crux of the matter is that the promise of EVs, while golden, may have been miscalculated or at least misjudged in terms of timing and market preparedness. The scenario now emerging from this electric fog is a confusing strategy, lost opportunities, and a tainted brand image. And in a world increasingly driven by perceptions and narratives, the ripples of GM's blunders could lead to a long-lasting damage to its reputation. Competitors are likely to seize on this moment, painting GM as a giant that lost its way. If GM continues to misunderstand the market, then the day is not far when we could see Mary Barra leading GM to a complete collapse. So to Mary Barra and all the other fat cat CEOs out there, listen up. The middle class has had enough. It's time to share the pie before the whole thing crumbles. Because let me tell you, if GM thinks they've got problems now, just wait until their workforce and loyal customers turn against them. That's not just a problem, that's a full-scale disaster. And it's one that could bring down the entire company. Whose side are you on in this battle of middle class versus automotive giants? Let me know in the comments below. I just uploaded a video about groundbreaking news that could hurt the entire EV industry. Do check it out if you want to be truly shocked by what's about to happen with EVs.